If you could turn, if you'd like to please, if you want to the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I wonder if we just stand at this time as we do the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And we're going to do that song that says, Our God is mighty to save you. Indeed, he is Savior of the world, and we can put our faith and our trust in him. Amen. Pray. 
supplying for each one of us on the cross of Calvary. And dear Father, even as we listen to your word this, at this moment, dear God, we know, Lord, you have a word for each one of us. I pray, dear Father, that you will give us a heart of flesh just to receive from you this evening. We pray that you will bless your servant even as he shares the word this Church in the name of Jesus Christ our King. I'm going to be talking about hope tonight. Hope and expectation of our King who is coming. So I want to turn your attention to Isaiah chapter 40 verses 3 to 5. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 3 to 5. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that you will bless it, Lord, through me as I speak, Lord. And just pray speak to me, Lord Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. So we are on the turn of 2023. We just come into this new year, and lots of us are still carrying baggage from previous years. We are carrying the disappointments from 2022, 2021, 2020 when COVID started. We are carrying some of the victories that we have experienced in those years as well. But God is doing a new thing. We are preparing for the King of Kings. And every year we hype ourselves up with our resolutions, with promises of new beginnings. And often by Around next week sometime, our resolutions will fall by the wayside and we will wondering, we'll be wondering what happened. We said we're not eating chocolate cake this year and we're back to square one. But the people of Israel or Judah were taken into captivity. They were exiled in Babylon for 70 years. We have come through a pandemic where we felt a bit of what it means to be isolated. From family and friends. These exiles were separated from other kinsmen, from their land, from their temple. They thought that they were defeated as a nation. They had no political power, nothing. But God, God gave a word to the people, saying, prepare, prepare the way of the Lord, for the King is coming. And we wondered, does God speak to us as well in this day and age. This was a word for the children of Israel who were in exile. But God still speaks to us through his word. And we must also prepare. The first way that we must prepare the way of the Lord is with humble repentance. If we go to the book of Luke chapter 3 verses 2 and 3, we hear of a man who was from birth ordained by God to proclaim and prepare the way. We are talking of John the Baptist, Luke chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. And we read, the word, of the, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah in the wilderness. And he went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. So Isaiah, the prophet, was there to prepare the way for the Lord by declaring his word. John the Baptist was ordained to proclaim the word of the Lord and prepare the way for Jesus our Messiah. We too, church, are to prepare the way of the Lord 
The first way we do this is with humble repentance. John preached the gospel of repentance, repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Before he took people through the waters of baptism, he taught them that they had to repent, let go of the former things, turn around 180 degrees and go in a new direction. That was John's ministry and that is the ministry of the church. We understand as those who come after the resurrection of Christ that we prepare the way to the cross. When we declare the word of the Lord, when we are the voices crying out in the wilderness, we are voices pointing to the way of the cross. All roads must lead to the cross. If it does not lead to the cross, it will lead to the way of destruction. Israel was in exile for disobedience. They trusted in military might. They trusted in their own devices. But God exiled them for disobedience. We do not prepare in our own strength. We prepare because we know it is God that acts with us. And God only acts with us if we are acting in His strength, accordance with His will. That happens when we let go of our own desires, when we let go of what we want to do, and we let God reign. When we let Him decide what He is going to do with our lives. So, that means we have to repent. Repent of all selfishness. In 2022, many of us had goals. How many of them were goals that, or that was revolving around God's word? In 2023, when we came into this new year, did that change? Did we resolve ourselves to, to follow after Christ with the zeal, to prepare the way by bringing sinners to repentance? Did we come to a place of repentance when we saw that the way is to the cross, to the empty tomb? Our King is coming. We must prepare with repentance, with repentant hearts, rejoicing in grace each day. The King is coming. Prepare in response to the word. When we look at our key text, we read a voice cries out in verse 3. We read in the end of verse 5, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Verse 6, a voice says, cry out. Verse 8, but the word of our God will stand forever. We here are listening to the word of God. God's, when God speaks, things happen. And when God speaks, we must respond in faithful obedience to his word. The word of God will stand forever. When we wish each other in the new year, we always wish good things. We always have a good word to tell people. And that's a good thing. As Christians, we must bring a word of hope. But is this hope merely centered around man's word? Or are we declaring the word of God, which is an everlasting hope, which is, itself is true? Don't put your trust in the words of man. Lots of us turn to horoscopes. Not lots of us. We hope none of us here in church turn to horoscopes. But many who call themselves Christians turn to horoscopes, thinking their star sign will give them the word that they need to hear to direct their lives. The Bible warns us to beware of such devices. It is only the word of God that will stand. Turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 28, verses 10 to 11. Jeremiah was a prophet that spoke to the Israelites before they were about to be exiled. He was one of the prophets that was warning them of their coming exile. And people didn't believe him because his word was not a good word. We say good in what it comes. But he was declaring the word of God and he had lots of opposition. Jeremiah chapter 28 verses 10 to 11. Then the prophet Hananiah took the yoke bars from the neck of Jeremiah the prophet and broke them. And Ananias spoke in the presence of all people, saying, Thus says the Lord, Even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all the nations within two years. But Jeremiah the prophet went his way. So we have these two camps, Jeremiah and we have the prophets, which includes Ananias. And a nice camp where those that were encouraging the people saying the exile will only last two years. Then things will be over. It was good for the people to hear. It tickled their ears. But Jeremiah said no. 70 years. 
Look at Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 8 to 14. Just a few, a few verses down. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Do not let your prophets and your diviners who are among you deceive you, and do not listen to the dreams of their dream. For it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I do not send them, declares the Lord. For thus says the Lord, when seventy years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. This popular verse that we love hearing, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Verse 12, then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord. I will bring you back from the place to, to which I sent you to exile. So, Ananias said two years. Exile will only last two years and then things will be rosy. Jeremiah said, no, settle down, take wives, marry, plant, take up residence, get comfortable. This is going to be a long ride in exile. Be careful who you listen to. It may sound good, but is it the word of the Lord? Not every season in this year of 2022 is going to be pleasant. We don't like hearing that. But 2023 is going to have its own challenges. But we can take heart that God is with us even in the midst of those challenges. And that one day the King is coming back. He's going to make things new. And that brings me to my third point. The king is coming. Prepare for freedom and restoration. COVID 2022 was brutal. We still experience some of the continuing effects today. Lots of people have lost their lives in case they didn't have floods that still devastate us. We couldn't do much swimming this year. It's Lebanon, that's, that's painful. But 2023 is a new year and we look forward to the new opportunities that it brings. But with its challenges as well, we turn to God who will bring freedom and restoration. And we must prepare for that. God and God alone can liberate us. What has held us captive in 2022? Was it negative words that were spoken to us as children that we still, that we still hold on to? Is it unforgiveness? Is it bad habits, in other words, sin, that we hold on to? Can we let that go in the new year? We know that the seasons will not always be easy. We know that this world is dark, this world is evil, this world hates us. But we have a God who loves us. We have a God that is always on our side, even when we are being disciplined as people, as individuals, as a church, nation, God still loves us and we can respond to him in obedience at any time, whether we are in captivity, whether we are free. But we must prepare for the freedom that comes. This world is dying. We know from the fall that this world is always under, this world is under the curse, but Jesus broke that curse and God will restore. We suffer. We suffer loss. We, we suffer because of the hatred that we feel for the world for sin. We know that the world hates us in turn. But our suffering is not in vain. Israel was in exile for 70 years. They suffered. We too as a church are in exile. We are, not, we are in a world that hates us. But our King is coming to get us and He will restore all things. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 21. Paul is writing here, and he's talking about the love of God who gives us hope, hope that he will make all things new. For I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed in us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revelation of the sons of God. 
Procreation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of being subjected to hope that the creation itself would be set free from the bondage to from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. Church, as we prepare, we prepare in earnest expectation that Jesus is coming again. We can plan, and that's good. We have to implement plans that draw us closer to God that, that are in line with His will. But ultimately, if we are not relying on the power of God, if we are not acting in hope that God will do the work as we prepare, then we are planning in vain. Prepare in hope that Jesus is going to come and do the work that He is said He's going to do. He's going to restore. So, we come back full circle to our text. The text starts off in chapter 40, the second part of Isaiah. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her, that she has served the term and that her penalty is paid that she has received from the Lord's hand double for her sins. Verse 9 Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Verse 10 See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his, arm, in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Church, 2023 is a year that God has given us. Let's make it a year of preparation for his coming, a year that we can prepare the hearts of men and women, that we can prepare ourselves for a new work of God. Our lives. No longer let's be exiles captive to sin, to bad habits, to the bondage of this world. But let us be liberated, walk in the liberty that the children of God only know. Let grace set us free as we prepare. And we all bow our heads and close our eyes. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. We thank you that you have brought us through 2022. Lord, that we are in a new year. And Lord, we pray that as we have heard your word, Lord, that your word will resound in our hearts, that we will not let any obstacles stand in the way of your word. Lord, that we will prepare for your coming again. Lord, that we will prepare for your glory this year. Lord, we that we will prepare daily, Lord, in our walk with you. Oh Lord, fill us with your spirit. Fill us, Lord, and set us free from the bondage of corruption to sin, the bondage of corruption in our flesh. Lord, we pray that, Lord, all flesh will see your glory. Lord, we know that when you speak, things happen. Lord, help us not to trust in the words of men, in, the own, in our own sayings to ourselves, in silly fables and myths, but Lord, in your word, help us to dig deeper. Lord, to have hope that is grounded in the truth of your word. Lord, help us, Lord. We need you and we need your grace. And we know that, Lord, if we prepare in your strength, in your strength alone, that this year will be a year of victory and liberation like no other. So, Lord, we put all our hopes for 2023 in your hands. Lord, we put our hope in you going forward. And, Lord, we trust you for all that you're going to do. And we look forward, Lord, to your coming again. In Jesus' name. You church for this opportunity to speak and we're happy to have pastor and family back with us um, congratulations on 20 years of ministry pastor and for 30 years of marriage i think uh, jesus needs a bigger congratulations for that one but uh yeah we are so glad to have you back thank you joe and church we thank god for uh, his hand upon us uh, safe traveling message and we are back again and so we trust that we will be able to see you on Sunday when we get uh, back together for our 9.30 uh, Sunday morning service. Let's receive the blessing. Now church receive this blessing. May the people bless our Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Be our portion now and forevermore. 
as all of God's children say together. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father.